Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? As always, I hope you're good. I am great. Picked up some peperomias and thought they would be a nice plant to talk about. Very common house plant, is fairly easy to grow house plant, and the, there's some nuances that go along with growing them. So let's just dive right in there. I have a few different varieties here. I have another that's off camera I need to go grab but I wanna go over the basic care, repotting, and then nuances, tips and tricks and things. I cover that at the end of the video. So for starters, I actually picked these guys up from Sam's Club. They came in a two pack that had a whole bunch of different assorted plants and they were very, very, very cheap. There's just a lot of reasons to love peperomias. Peperomias is a very large, large, large group of plants. I only have three different types here. This right here is the obtusifolia, Peperonia obtusifolia, which is the one that's generally referred to as the baby rubber plant. This is, of course, the variegated variety of Peperomia obtusifolia. And then over here, this guy with the greener leaves that I actually thought was just another obtusifolia, typically. They look like the variegated ones back there, but they're green. But the tag has this one labeled as a Peperomia clausifolia, or clausifolia, clausi, clausiwa. You saw it, it's right there. I just assumed when I saw this at the store that it was an obtusifolia, because it kind of looks like one, doesn't it? Comparison to those, I mean, pretty similar, but there are some differences. And then over here is the teardrop Peperomia, which I absolutely love. This is Peperomia orba. This one it will have more, kind not really a trailing habit, but the branches on them gets a little bit longer. It's more like a lanky habit than a trailing habit. The appearance overall will be more like a bush that's fairly airy that you can see through. And eh, all that doesn't really matter. I wanna talk about the care. Most specifically with the obtusifolia, Peperomia obtusifolia. They are native to Southern Florida and throughout the Caribbean. Do you guys say Caribbean or Caribbean? I say both. Generally, the obtusifolia only gets about 12 to 18 inches high. At 18 inches is pretty big for one of these guys, which makes them an excellent house plant. And there's far more to it than that that makes them an excellent house plant. Another thing that I love about peperomias is that they are non-toxic to children or humans in general and dogs and cats. I still always advise keep your plants out of reach of both of those, but it's just nice to know that you don't have to worry about it as much. Case by case, there's always variations. People and animals can have different reactions, but generally it is considered to be non-toxic. These guys do have a very succulent appearance to them. I actually think they look a lot like begonias when you look in here at their stems. Not, that's a leaf. These are the stems. That's a leaf. That's a petiole. Here's a stem. As I was saying though, despite that succulent appearance, they do still need a fair amount of water. These like a rich organic soil, one that drains very, very, very well. Very sharp drainage. You wanna see the water move through the pot quickly, but you don't want it to hold on to moisture for a really, really, really long time. Uh, I actually intentionally noticed this one needed some water this morning and thought I'm gonna hold off until I film so I can just kind of point out the differences you can see. This is a light brown color with the soil right here. Whereas this peperomia I watered earlier and the soil is much darker in appearance. Most peat-based soils should have that kind of color difference. You can also tell a lot between the weight of a dry plant versus a wet plant. I just did that backwards. This is the wet one, that's the dry one. They're also a different size. So it's important to make sure that the top inch to even two inches of soil dries out really well with these guys before you water them again. On average, I probably water my peperomias about once a week to even every 10 days. It just, like I said, depends on how long it's taking that soil to dry out. And that varies throughout the year with humidity and whatnot. Probably also notice I don't have these actually potted up. That's because the pots that they came in don't have holes in the bottom, which is not going to work well with these guys. They need drainage. So they're just kind of sitting in here for decorative purposes for now. I'll pot them up into something that looks much nicer in a little while. Peperomias do not need bright, intense light. In fact, part shade is what they will do best in. Really, uh, just kind of shoot to make sure they're not in a really dark room. A brightly lit room works well for them. They do appreciate humidity. It's one of the things that sets them apart when you talk about how they look like a succulent, yet these guys, they like humidity. They like that organically rich soil. If you're growing them outside, zones 10 and up is just what they need in indirect filtered sun in the afternoon. Morning sun should be okay. In the house, like I said, just a nice bright room, a humid room works great. A bathroom, those tend to be very humid as long as there's a window in there for them. And like I said, the light doesn't need to be hitting them directly, but it, the room needs to stay bright 
throughout a lot of the day. Even though they're a part shade plant indoors, they're always going to need more sun, just not direct scorching sun. In the house, that would be considered medium light. They do respond well to fertilizing and even to pruning. Pruning does help bush them out during the active growing season. I always move my plants outdoors during the summertime. I know it's not an option for a lot of people, especially maybe you live in an apartment, but this is a great plant for apartment living because it stays so small and it's just so easy and forgiving. But when they're in that active growth, it's good to go ahead and fertilize them probably every other week. When it is time to fertilize, just a general all-purpose fertilizer works just fine with them. They don't really need anything special. There are some things to watch out for with succulents in general. One of these had a leaf. Let me see if I can find it. This leaf right here, I'll try and zoom in on it. That is more than likely just some shipping damage and the browning around the edges of the leaves is likely just from being in some drier conditions. But if those little spots in there, the kind of serrated areas in that leaf were on the new growth and this had a lot of extra cupping to it, that can be a sign of calcium or magnesium deficiency, which is a pretty easy thing to supplement for. That's not a super common problem with these guys, but if you notice that some really wonky weird leaves coming out, that might be what's going on there. As I just mentioned, the browning in the foliage is usually an indication of things being a little bit too dry for them, and yellowing is generally an indication of things being too wet for them. In the house, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to keep things watered that like frequent watering, but they don't like to stay sopping wet for a really long time, but they don't want to dry out. So one thing you can do with these is water them from below. Okay, so here I just have a cup that my beta came in. I was using it to scoop some duckweed out of its tank. Typically a drainage dish or whatever, a Rubbermaid or uh, what's it called? Some type of Tupperware, something would work for that. You can go ahead and put it in something like that and pour the water in from below. Let the plant kind of suck that up. I usually, when I do that, if the plant's bone dry like this, prefer to actually fill it from the top, which I know seems kind of weird like why even bother but it kind of jump starts the process of the plant soaking that water up and i don't let it sit in here for too terribly long when i have to do this because you don't want the soil to stay saturated the air pockets start to lose their oxygen contents anaerobic things start happening it's not always great so you can just go ahead put a little bit of water in there let it suck it on up and then you avoid things being a little bit too wet around the basis of the plants where the soil is where the soil meets the base of the plant i should say it's typically only something you really need to worry about if maybe your house is a little bit on the cooler side so when you water it there's more potential for things to kind of rot in here. If the plant's not growing very actively because of those cooler temperatures, then that water just kind of sits there unused, which you really don't want. The top of that soil is still kind of dry, so I am, I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy sit and soak for a little bit. The flowers on the peperomias, they're kind of a classic, but they're really nothing super outstanding as far as flowers go. The inflorescent looks kind of like a rat tail. It looks pretty cool. It's not like it puts on a show, a display. It's nothing like, say, like a, um, oh, well, anthyrum. They're classic. It's still really neat to see them when they flower, though. Peperomias do not need to be repotted all that often. That's largely because of their smaller size. One way to know that they need to be repotted is if the roots start to come out the bottom of the pot, and you can even kind of feel the pots. This one has some give to it, so I know this one really hasn't rooted in very much at all, and that is that is probably from overwatering. This ended up accidentally sitting in a pot that I didn't know, realize didn't have holes in it, so I've pulled that out to let it dry out thoroughly, so it don't have to deal with any types of rot or anything like that, and I'll resume watering it again on a normal schedule. Because of their smaller stature, another thing that is great with these guys is that even if they do become infested with some type of insects, say mealybugs, spider mites, something like that. These are little enough, you can take them to your sink and just blast those guys right off. I still like to go ahead and use a horticultural oil in between, but any plant that's small enough to just stick in the sink and spray the bugs away, I always do that. And because, like I said, they stay smaller, it's very easy to do that. I mean, even when these guys are bigger, because these will keep on growing, these still have plenty of growing left to do, they should at least probably, I would say, um, double to triple their width and come up a good another probably six inches in height. It's like a nice little sort of what would be a compact bush for the landscape. That's what this is for the house. And this is just a very small sampling of peperomias. There are a lot out there, a lot of really, really cool looking ones. These are just the ones I kind of gathered up for the video and for some projects I have coming up that I need them for particularly these two. The other two I just kind of got because I wanted them. So if you do notice that there is a lot of browning going on in the foliage, like I mentioned, that is a, usually a sign of low humidity. You can put them on a, a tray into a drainage dish that has pebbles in it and fill that with water and then make sure that the bottom of the pot isn't in contact with that water so it doesn't get sucked up constantly. That can help increase the humidity around the plant somewhat and can be sort of useful. 
I typically find with something like that, if the air is that dry that the peperomias are starting to crisp up, that really just a small little humidifier works really well. Or having it near a sink, maybe where you do dishes a lot or a dishwasher, or like I mentioned, in the bathroom is a great option as long as there's light in there for it. Or you can miss the surrounding area, but probably not a great idea to miss these guys directly onto the foliage, just because you don't want any type of rot or anything to start happening within the foliage, within where the petioles meet the stems water can settle in there and can be problematic if you don't have good airflow or the right temperatures for it to evaporate fast enough. And lastly, propagation. I don't think I'm gonna be propagating any of these guys just yet, but it's an easy thing to do. There are various ways to go about propagating the peperomias, uh, particularly, Throughout the majority of this video, I'm mostly referring to the obtusifolia. There are, I think there's over a thousand different varieties of peperomias. But I am talking about the ones I have here, which is the obtusifolia, the closifolia, right? That's who you are over here. And then the orba, peperomia orba. Propagation is fairly similar to that of like an African violet. You can just snap off a leaf, get it from the base where it meets right up against the stem and pull that off. I don't mind removing this leaf because it's all the way down low. And to me, it looked like something that's going to retain some moisture. So I don't mind pulling that out of there. You can stick that into a vessel with water. I usually wrap them in foil to keep the light out or dip it in rooting hormone first. That can help and just wait for roots to grow. Or you can even just go ahead and stick it into a nice moist soil mix and keep that covered to help hold the humidity in for a few weeks until they start rooting. It's very easy. Or you can do stem cuttings, which is what I'm definitely not going to be doing with these guys right now. And that's where you would come in and make your cut right above a node, which is where the petiole, which is the part that leads up to the leaf, meets right here. Make that cut right in there, and then go ahead, put some rooting hormone on it, stick it into some moist soil with a bag or something over it to help hold in the humidity, and uh, just let it do its thing. Or you can do it in water, like I just mentioned with the leaf. Just like with an African violet or a pothos, it's very, very, very simple. It is helpful to make sure that the soil medium that you're using is very, very, very sterile. That way you're avoiding things like mold. That's usually what gets in the way with rooting a lot of cuttings. All right, that's gonna do it. I think I touched on just about everything I wanted to talk about with these guys. They're a very fun, interesting, and easy to grow plant. I highly recommend them to everybody out there. Sometimes people have trouble with them. Go ahead, try again. It's just one of those things where sometimes practice makes perfect and there can be a bit of a learning curve with what kind of water they want. But once you have that down, they're very, very, very simple plants. Just not too much light, not too much dark. Just a bright room, indirect light, and water them when that top inch of soil dries out. That's pretty much it. And you don't want to stay wet for too terribly long. So it looks like they're not drying out then maybe you might want to consider repotting them to something that will dry a little bit more quickly. As far as potting mixes are concerned, you can use a general all-purpose potting soil and then add in some horticultural charcoal, some orchid bark, anything that's going to make it a little bit more gritty and let it drain well, but not necessarily like a cactus mix because those are kind of void of nutrients. So if you use an all-purpose potting soil, you may end up wanting to add like Espoma Biotone, helps to enrich soil, uh, some compost works really well. But uh, I'll be doing a separate video when it's time to repot these guys. I'm gonna wait till springtime when it's warmer and I'm moving these outside probably. They are just so fun and pretty. They add nice interest into the home, sort of a splash of color, but they're not like obtrusive. They're something you can have on a shelf. They have a nice design interest, I think. Most of them. Our little Orba teardrop over there is kind of scraggly looking, but she'll be all right. What are some things y'all have going on with your peperomias? Different varieties you're growing? There are a ton of varieties out there. There's actually a few more I'd like to get my hands on. Hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot and lets me know I'm doing a good job, so I really do appreciate it. I notice it, and so thank you very much. Thank you so much for doing that. And subscribe as well. I upload multiple times a week, so don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. I'm looking forward to planting these guys up into some arrangements and doing some fun, pretty, fun, pretty, nerdy, weird plant things with them. Ugh, losing my voice. Like I said, though, let's talk about the plant. Comment down below, get a conversation going. Tips and tricks. It's always fun to talk about the nuances of the plants. And you can find me on Instagram at Tropical Plant Party. That's a good place to get a hold of me, get in touch with me, have fun nerdy plant time with me on there. And the rest of my social media is linked down below in the description as well. Follow me and I'll follow you back. That's already drank up a decent amount of water, hasn't it? It's only been about maybe five minutes. That's good. She was thirsty. All right, like I said before, I hope everybody's doing well and everything's just going great for you. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.